Hello guys, I'm Miske from Karate Dojo Waku and finally we have the Karate Nerd on our channel today. I think pretty much everybody knows him, but could you please briefly introduce yourself to my audience, please? Oh, hi everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com, also known as the Karate Nerd. <laughs> and uh, all I do is just karate. I, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, <laughs> I practice, I teach, I learn, I read, I write, I do videos. And it's just my way of life. And right. uh, I am honored to be here. Thank you so much. We actually met two years ago, right? Two years ago yeah, yeah. in Tokyo and we did a video on, on your channel. So I'm very pleased to have you finally on our channel today. So, Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. So the topic for today is going to be top 10 things that you shouldn't be doing for your kata. So maybe some of you might be surprised or be shocked by hearing these 10, but hopefully you guys can implement it from tomorrow's practice. So uh, let's get started with the first one, which is rushing. This is right. a pretty co popular one, I think, because yeah. when I see beginners do it, I think people tend to rush, right? What do you think? Yeah, it's super common. And I know because I've been teaching beginners since I was a beginner myself <laughs> almost, and we all rush our kata because we're so focused on getting to the end. Oh, is that why? Ah. That's why. Because people think that the value of a kata is in completing it. That's true, but, that is true. Yeah, but I think the value is actually in the process, not mm. in the outcome. You know, when I see people rushing, I think how they perceive kime might be a little different yeah. from the more experienced people. Because when the experienced karateka does a kata, they have the kime for every single move. But yes. like you mentioned, a beginner's goal might be to finish the movement. So even if the small techniques don't have any impact, they're in the process of finishing. So why would you stop, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I have a And that's idea. when you start to cheat and you start to take shortcuts because you mm. want to finish faster. Shortcuts. That's yeah. the worst you can do, right? <laughs> and so you get many mm. bad habits from mm. rushing your kata. How would you, what would you tell people that's rushing? maybe practice slower or how would Yes, you and sometimes that? you can exaggerate it. You can practice super ah. slow motion mm. because what you need to learn is patience. Right, right. Because if you already know the techniques, the problem is not physical, it's mental. That's true. And if you can't do it slow, then you will never be able to do it properly fast either. That's so true. you should always start slow. Slow practices. So moving on to the second one is holding your breath. So I think we both have breathing <laughs> videos on our channel, but a common mistake that I see is people punching like this, holding onto their breath. Why would yes. you say it's a no, no? Because if you don't breathe, you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> That's simple, the short simple answer. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> you need to breathe. And if you hold your breath, you build up a lot of tension. Mm. And that's why just a, a simple advice such as open your mouth can actually help many people to start breathing more and relax. Mm. I noticed that people who don't breathe during kumite or kata tend to be not breathing even if when they're stretching. So ah. they'll be stretching like this, yes. but once you breathe out, things will relax and you know, you'll know you be able to bend yeah. down deeper. So I guess it's just a natural habit for them. And I think Miyamoto Musashi said it best when he said that your everyday um, kamae or fighting posture should be the same as your actual fighting posture. Right, right. Your kamae. And I don't think he was just talking about your physical posture, but also, you know, both your mindset mm -hmm. and also how you breathe. Right. So you should try to always be in your karate mode, even mm. in everyday life, which means you should bring your everyday life into your karate. Mm. And that also goes for your breathing. I see. Third point is the course. <clears throat> Of your technique usually let's say take an example of tsuki punch if your punch goes to the side or up is your power is not going to be delivered straight through the opponent actually i think a big reason is because people lack core strength and midline stability mm, interesting. so they try to compensate by using more external muscles to try to control their techniques and as soon as they get tired they start to lose mm. that technical aspect of the course, which is exactly what you're talking about. 
So, for example, their elbow starts flaring out right, because they right, want to right. keep their balance and not collapse. Mm. Also, the level of the hips. Uh, Sometimes you tend to drop one on hip one to the side. side yeah. Like the, yeah, exactly. Because you're compensating for a muscular imbalance. Mm. And again, you want to have a really strong and nice core, which affects your whole posture. Right, right. So any you know deep stances, going from deep to high or high to deep, or maybe moving to the side, turning, we must always keep our power onto the core. To exactly. stay balanced, right? Mm, thank yes. you so much. And this also connects to your breathing, which we already talked about. Because mm. if you lower your breathing and use your diaphragm, your belly, right. then it will be way easier than if you have your breathing very high. Mm, I agree. So our fourth one, fourth mistake, is tensing up. So I think this you know, overlaps with the previous one of uh, holding your breath and maybe rushing too. So yeah, that's true. When you see people that's, or, that are tensing up, what, what, what kind of advice would you give to them? Relax. <laughs> but how though? Maybe <laughs> they're like, I'm relaxed. Jesse, I'm yeah. relaxed. <laughs> Many karate coaches and teachers will actually do this because they don't really have a good methodology to get people to relax. Mm, I agree. I would give you another advice and that's an exercise where you try to scan your body. Mm. So this leads to self-awareness, which is I the see. key. So you can just do this when you're uh, lying down in bed, for example, and you try to feel your whole body starting from your toes, your feet, and gradually scan your whole body up all the way up until mm -hmm. you, you reach the head or the face and hair area. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is to feel any type of excessive tension and then just try to relax that tension because oh. in many cases you don't observe tension even though it's always there but when you stop and take a moment to actually feel it then you can start to do something with it which mm. of course is to just let it go that's a very nice point i think that's what some people focus on when they meditate at the beginning of the yeah. lesson mokso i think that's one way you know people say clear up your mind or make your focus recenterize on yourself yes but in, in another word it's basically saying like you mentioned to mm. Put the focus throughout your body, disperse it, and find yes. those points that you're tense, right? Uh, now we're going to move on to excessive stomping. Okay. I think this might be controversial, but we both agree that stomping is just not so good and it's something that we should always avoid. So anything in particular that you see when students are practicing? Yes, I would say that people who stomp usually do it because they're compensating for lack of real power. So they mm. want to feel powerful by mm. actually stomping. Mm. The problem is that then all that power goes into the ground <laughs> instead of into the opponent, which mm. is where it actually should go. Right, right. But when you make a loud noise and you get that full body tension of a stomp, it feels nice. I understand that. And it sounds impressive for people watching. That's why many people do it in competitions a lot da, da, da. because they want, yeah, they want to be impressive. Mm. But, but the idea is that you want to maintain control of your center of gravity. So you need to be graceful like a cat and not clumsy like an elephant. Right. I agree. And like, like you mentioned, if, since the power is going down, you can use it for techniques where you have to get the power down, right? Yeah. So an ex exercise in Shotokan, since I have a Shotokan background in Jion, we have a otoshi uke. So this one, where otoshi means we're dropping something. So we're having the block down. So it's you know acceptable to do it in those situations. Or it's even recommended to do it in those situations. Yes. So if the application of the technique is a stomp, for, for example, mm -hmm. a stomp mm -hmm. kick, then obviously you should stomp. Mm -hmm. But don't stomp all the time <laughs> whenever you're taking a step. Right, right. I agree. Yeah. So excessive stomping, don't do it, guys. Yes. That is it for episode number one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and Jesse's channel from up here. And also, why not check out these two videos? See you guys next time.